temporary euphoria. Or release. <laughs> yeah, especially if you constantly gotta work and do things that you might not want to do. That's like temporary happiness real quick. Just Jesus. I'm rich as fuck and I ain't nothing at the same time. People hate me and they love me at the same time. Man, I'm telling you, right there, Rolling Stone is probably like the top songs on this album for me. I felt like I resonate with that one a lot, for real. What's good, everybody? It's Gael. Welcome back to another video. And like the title says itself, we're going to be reviewing Brent Fias's latest album called Wasteland. I'm going to let you know my thoughts about it, how I felt about it, and you know, like what I thought the overall theme and like how I resonate with it, just like I did the previous album, all right? So we can just jump right into it. All right, so I do want to start off by saying that um, I kind of got hip to Brent Fiaz, you know, probably a little later than most people. I had a, a few of my friends and my sister tell me that, oh, you should listen to Brent, you should listen to Brent. And, you know, I, I, I always knew I was going to listen to him, but I didn't get, you know, really into it until like his previous album called um, Fuck the World come out a few years back. And that's when I heard the song like um, Clouded, Skyline, uh, Summer in London. Uh, as soon as I get home, you know, those songs. And I that's when I was like, oh, shoot, like these songs are like pretty, pretty dope. You know, like he's a really good artist. And um, uh, a song that really like brought me even closer to him was a song called Allure, which is a single. And I just fell in love with it because honestly, Brent Fiaz has his own style of like R&B and soul. That's really like different from all the mainstream stuff that we're listening to, that we're listening to at the moment. You feel me? So he's really... Um, a man of his own right now when it comes to making, you know, R&B music. He uses his own style, his own sounds, his own type of productions, which is really dope, in my opinion, honestly. All right, we're just going to jump right into it. Number one, Villain's Theme. That's a song right there. You know, if you know me, I'm an instrumental type of person. I love that moody, ambient, like, pad type of sounds. And Villain's Theme really fits that. And for me, personally, I really like it a lot because it gives you a sense of anticipation with everything that's going on. It's just a montage of like, like interviews or conversations he's had with people put together behind like this melodic, like moody type of sound. And I really like it a lot if you just give it a listen. Uh, I feel like it gets to a point where you live so much of your life in that state because you work so damn much. It's been years and I've been doing the same for folks like you, so we're toxic. So it's because of that, that's what I'm gonna push it. Oh, such a great track. Number one, amazing stuff, for real. <laughs> now for track two, uh, it's another track that I like a lot. The way like it was set up for like those harsh like um, I don't know what what it is to be honest, like a harsh like violin or trumpet, whatever it is that that really grabs your attention a lot after like the first few seconds of like um, of a, like a melodic intro. So that was pretty cool. Track two, Loose Change, really great, really great track in my opinion. I like it a lot, so yeah. Now the next song off the album is Gravity. Um, it's a good song in my opinion. It's with Tyler the Creator and DJ Dahi. Uh, you know, they did pretty well on it. I haven't heard anything bad about it. You know, I play it for myself in my car. Um, it's a really good song. Um, and I don't really have anything bad to say about it, honestly. It's a, it's a, it's a good song to me. So this is where the album starts to get interesting. Um, it's been a while since um, I've heard albums with like you know skits that tell like a full story. And Wasteland is an album that does that. It has about three or four skits in there that tells the story from beginning to end. And spoiler alert, just letting you guys know if you haven't heard the album yet. Um, this album what he the story that brent is telling here is you know a guy who's neglecting uh a future lifestyle that he's gonna have of being a father you know he's with a shorty 
Um, and the shorty's not happy because he's not, you know, manning up to be um, prepared to be a fatherhood and things just uh, escalate. And if you follow the album all throughout, um, towards the end of the album, um, Shorty tries to commit suicide and um, Brent tries to go um, save her. But unfortunately, when he calls 911 to, you know, to go save her before she kills herself, um, he unfortunately gets into a car accident. So that's the skit story. If you didn't want to hear it, I said spoiler alert, but that's the story of um, what goes on through uh, this album. You feel me? You know, throughout the project, um, Brent goes through a series of like toxic episodes. And I know that's probably like a word he doesn't want to use too often, but you know, the internet uses the word toxic. So that's what I'll use for now. But um, he goes through episodes of uh, being toxic, but also being, you know, more sensitive and open. Like he tries to be more of a lover, like the songs Heal Your Heart. You know, it's about him trying to like make, make, you know, peace or try to fix things that he wish he could fix in the past with like a partner that he had um in the past i'm sure he was probably talking to um all mine you know so he wants to you know be with someone and no one else could have her or um he also talks about what it's like being you know famous or what it's like reaching that level of superstardom you know i still feel like he's still growing as an artist and he has a lot of potential to becoming like one of the best i believe and price of fame really talks about that he talks about how like you know there is a price for fame and notoriety and it's not always sweet all the time and that's what he op opens up about in that song and that's just you know real real stuff that he's talking about so i see where he's coming from where he says like these are just experiences and not just really him necessarily being toxic you feel me now if you keep going down the list of the songs that are on this album um there's some features on here not a whole lot but um you got alicia keys on here which was very surprising to me i haven't heard from alicia keys in a while um but uh you have drake you already know how that is it's another good song wasting time it's a really popular one a lot of um people that i know really love that one but the song here rolling stone rolling stone is probably my favorite one so far so far on this album. To be honest, I might honestly be biased because like I'm a big fan of simplicity um, when it comes to music. It doesn't have to be like overcomplicated or too layered or vocals have to be too complex or too much effects or anything like that. But Rolling Stone, I feel like it's a song that was like very straight to the point. You know, there's barely like any drums in there, honestly. And like, he's just saying, what needs to be said, you know, like, I'm sorry, blah, 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 blah. I can't sing, but, you know, I just resonated with that one for many unnamed reasons. But, like, that song, Rolling Stone, right there, like, I've had that that one on loop for, uh, for, uh, for a few days after I heard it. Because at first, like, I was like, oh, shoot, this song is smooth. But, like, like I said, you know, I live with albums before I always have to give, like, my final thoughts or reviews on it. But... Rolling Stone, you know, after listening to the album like the third or fourth time, that's a song I, my brain went back to and was just like, yeah, like this one's, this one's a really good one, a really good one. So right now, right now, that's like number one for me off the album. Now, if I'm to be fair, um, I guess I could say the least played song or my least favorite song on this is probably track 11. Yeah, for me, it wasn't really anything like mind blowing. Like I get it, a lot of people might like it a lot, but for me, it was just, it just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. I'll say that. Um, and then you got Dead Man Walking, um, Addictions. Addictions has a really nice chorus. I was catching myself saying that a lot in my head uh, for a few days. You got Role Model, Jackie Brown, Bad Luck, The Final Skip, and then Angel. And if you know Brent Fiaz, you already know what to expect. Um, once you're halfway through the album, it's pretty dope. Um, so yeah, you know what to expect when you're heading towards the end of the album to wrap it all up, you feel me? So that's the album, uh, Wasteland. Um, it's a decent album, I like it a lot. Um, it's a good continuation off his uh, previous stuff that he's worked on. And you know, I'm, I'm a big fan and I do recommend this album to 
people who are really into um, R&B and soul or some type of experimental R&B and soul. You know, Brent Fiaz does have a certain style that, you know, some people will rock with that's not really traditional to your custom or to your, like, you know, original style of R&B and soul, especially the ones we hear today. I feel like, like I said before in the video, um, he's really, like his own man when it comes to making his own music not a lot of people are making the type of music he makes like using his voice you know that's not super auto-tuned or anything like that um he really he really carries himself pretty well so if you haven't already check out wasteland by brent fiaz you know on all like streaming platforms obviously you guys know that um and then other than that that's all i got for this video and i'll see you guys